Hello friends, welcome back to the tetrahedron chemistry classes. So guys, I have uh, covered infrared spectroscopy, that means the physical spectroscopy part of the infrared spectroscopy and various other concepts involved in the infrared spectroscopy I have covered in my lectures. If you have followed those lectures, then you must be feeling that I uh, skipped or I missed the interpretation part of the IR spectra and the various problems based on the how to solve the various problems based on the IR spectra. So, uh, from today onwards actually, uh, I am going to start uh, to take these uh, IR spectroscopy interpretation part. First of all, you see in this particular lecture, I am going to discuss 150 solved problems of IR spectroscopy which I have collected from the different books and the different sources. So, this lecture is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, for every students, whether you are in BSc or in BTEC first year or you are doing your MSc or you are going for the competitive examination, you are preparing for the CSIR NET, GATE, IIT JAM, right, whatever you are doing, this lecture is going to be very, very helpful for all of you, okay. So, without wasting too much of time, I am going to start uh, my lecture and see, uh, my first question is what, which occurs at the higher wave number? Okay, that means the, the question is actually, uh, the question has been asked uh, asked for uh, carbon single bond stretch, okay, that means CO stretch, okay. So, where actually this CO stretch would be, uh, would occur at the higher wave number. So, you should know one thing, right, and uh, if your wave number is high, so what I can do, I can write wave number high, it simply means bond is strong, bond is strong and higher energy is needed to stretch this bond. So, if you know this thing, then you will be able to solve the large number of the problems. Higher the value of the wave number, bond is to bond is very, very strong, which means you will require higher energy to stretch the bond. So, in that case, uh, you have to find this actually. You see carbon is there, oxygen is there. So, carbon single bond oxygen is there. And in that case also carbon single bond oxygen is there. First one is your phenol, which is aromatic in nature, you know. And second one is your cyclohexanol. Cyclo hexanol okay and you have to identify uh, in which of these two compounds this carbon a uh, single bond oxygen stretch would be higher so uh, this is quite quite this is guys quite simple you know how uh, you can understand the thing if you have followed my lecture on resonance and everything then you should uh, then you are aware that this particular electron pair which is present on the oxygen can be donated to this and this can come up okay so uh, if you draw the structure for this one, resonance structure for this one, so what you will get, you will get this kind of the structure where this carbon oxygen bond is having slightly or partial double bond character and of course this would be negative and if you keep moving your electrons in the ring then you will end up in the entire resonance structure. But my aim is not to uh, get all the uh, resonance structure. My aim is to explain only due to this resonance, which is due to the presence of this benzene, this electron donating effect of the oxygen will give the partial double bond character to the uh, this carbon oxygen double bond. However, in case of this cyclohexanol, there are no double bond present on this. So, this kind of resonance is not possible in the cyclohexanol no resonance i can write here no resonance no resonance okay and you know uh, your triple bond is stronger than the double bond and double bond is stronger than single bond so here i can write decreasing bond strength decreasing bond strength okay so it simply indicates that that means double bond is more strong so that means this double bond is more stronger and if the bond is stronger, you can see here, higher energy needed to stretch the bond, that means wave number would be high. That means for this phenol, your wave number would be high. So, your answer is what? Your answer is this one. That means phenol is having higher wave number for carbon, uh, single bond oxygen, double bond. Okay. So, this is how you can understand the problem. Now, moving to the next problem, what it says problem B or say not uh, problem 2 actually, right? So, this is your problem B, your problem 2 I have written B here, it is a 2. 
this is your acetone uh, this is your acetamide and this uh, and you have to find the uh, carbon double bond stretch the value of the carbon bond double bond stretch not the value actually which would occur at the higher uh, wave number so i am not going to uh, tell you the wave number exactly because wave number has not been asked however i will cover the wave numbers of uh, the different carbonyl groups in my other lectures when when uh, i will explain the spectroscopy part please remember okay so now again you can see here acetamide is uh, very special why this acetamide is special you know not only acetamide but all amides right this is carbon double bond oxygen and this is your nitrogen which is your nh2 okay so in that case what can happen you know this nitrogen is having lone pair and this oxygen is also having the lone pair okay and you also know this nitrogen is less electronegative than this oxygen so what can happen electron pair can be donated to this particular carbon nitrogen bond and this will come up okay and it will again results a resonance structure and that resonance structure would look like ch3 c single bond o double bond nh2 nitrogen will get a positive charge oxygen will have the negative charge due to the excess pair of electron so in case of the amide you can see this carbon actually carbon uh, double bond oxygen is acquiring the single bond character it is having the single bond character okay and this kind of uh, resonance is not possible in case of the acetone so here double bond character is high so i can write high double bond character db character or nature okay and for this i can write single bond character and again you can apply the same concept double bond is stronger that mean it will require higher energy to stretch that mean higher wave number for this one so that mean your acetone would occur at the carbonyl group of the acetone uh, will have the higher wave number when compared to the amide so your correct answer is your acetone okay so this acetone is the correct answer right i hope you are getting the things okay <clears throat> now uh, moving to the next question my next question is question number 3 that is c here you can see the two compounds are given see it, this problem is actually looking like this the first problem right cyclohexanol and your phenol similarly this is uh, what your cyclohexylamine and this is your aromatic compound aniline and you have to tell this carbon nitrogen bond whether this carbon nitrogen bond or this carbon nitrogen bond would occur at Uh, higher wave number okay again you have to decide which one which would occur at the higher wave number so again you can take the help of the resonance so if you take the help of the resonance you know the lone pair is there uh, on the nitrogen atom and this can be donated to this ring and this will come here okay and again you can get your resonance structure and that resonance structure would look like uh, this is double bond now nh2 your nitrogen will get positive over there and this would be negative and this is negative okay so that mean nitrogen in aniline is having double bond character while this kind of resonance is not possible in case of the cyclohexyl amine because there is no benzene ring here so uh, there is no resonance in that case so this actually is having the partial double bond character so i can write here partial double bond character partial db character or nature see nature is actually a little bit smaller than characteristic or uh, character so i am writing nature actually okay and here you see single bond character and you know the double bond is stronger that mean this bond will require this carbon nitrogen bond will require higher energy to stretch this bond that mean higher wave number so your correct answer is aniline so your aniline is the correct answer okay now moving to the next problem what it says my next compound is acetone and then i am having the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so uh you know this is your carbonyl compound this carbon is the alpha with respect to this functional group and this is your beta so uh, here you what you can do uh, you can write alpha here you can write beta here alpha beta unsaturation is there so due to this alpha beta uh, unsaturation uh, this bond can come here again the resonance is playing a very very important part 
see in my earlier lecture also whether i have taken your ir ir spectroscopy nmr uv whatever right i have already explained to you uh, to solve the problem based on your your spectroscopic problems right so these spectroscopic problems require intense knowledge of your general organic chemistry if you are not having a very sound knowledge of the general organic chemistry then you will not be able to solve the problem based on the spectroscopy so it is my personal recommendation to all the students if you are, if you want to learn the ir spectroscopy interpretation then you should know you should go first for the general spectroscopy right goc right very very important so now if you see uh, again this will have uh, the resonance structure that will be ch2 now this is your ch uh, this is your c this is single bond o this is ch3 okay and due to this resonance this will get positive over there and this will get negative over there so here you can see this my alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is having partial single bond character so i can write here single bond character while this kind of resonance is not possible in normal ketone so this is having the more double bond character and you know the double bond requires higher energy to stretch the bond that means higher wave number for this acetone so your correct answer is the acetone in that case you can mark this acetone as the correct answer okay now moving to the next problem my next problem is uh, problem number 5 or e whatever you are counting okay here you see this is your alcohol right very good this is your acid okay and here in that case you see carbon single bond oxygen band it is you are absorbing at uh, 1060 that mean you know if if i uh, if i redraw the structure this this particular part if i redraw this particular part then you will find carbon uh, hydrogen and hydrogen and here you see your chain is continuing and this is your this one so basically you are you are focused on this one so you are getting the absorption band at around 1060 okay and uh, for this particular compound you know this carbon single bond oxygen is there i can what i can do i can write it again carbon double bond oxygen and this is the carbon chain which is continuing here and this is oxygen this is your hydrogen you know the lone pair is there okay so what can happen in the acids actually right uh, this will come here okay and this can go there and if you do this then you end up with this carbon single bond and this is the chain continuing this is double bond oxygen see uh, whether you consider this structure this is having carbon double bond oxygen nature okay and if you consider this one this is again carbon double bond oxygen nature but in case of the ethanol this is your what ethanol right this resonance is not possible in the ethanol because there is no presence of any hetero atom here so that mean it is having the single bond character and this is having double bond character due, due to this resonance so definitely it will have the lower wave number because single bond requires less energy to stretch the bond that mean lower wave number that's why this absorption is happening at 1060 cm cm inverse for your c single bond o while in case of your acid actually you are having this bond so acid will always have the higher value of the uh, carbon single bond oxygen because it acquires the double bond character due to the resonance i hope this is clear now now moving to the next problem my next problem is problem i or 6 whatever uh, this is your uh, structure see uh this is your acetone right and then you are having uh, your ester see this is your ester and you know the cyclic esters are lactone so it's a six membered lactone okay and this is your amide cyclic amide okay so ketone ester amide so first of all i can write here and you have to decide Uh, which one would have actually uh, the higher wave number so again you can see here uh, if you if you take this one you know oxygen is here with two lone pairs over there and this amide is also here so what can happen uh, this can be donated to here and this can go up okay and 
uh, you can draw the structure for this one resonance structure so i'm not having space that's why I've, i'm drawing it here this is your oxygen now it is having acquiring a double bond nature and this is having the negative okay so uh, if you consider this particular one it is also having the double bond nature if you uh, consider this this is also having the double bond nature so basically in this ester or in the cyclic uh, ester or the lactone your double carbon double bond oxygen is having the more double bond character it is having more double bond character right but if you draw for this amide so this can come here this can go up and for amide you will get this kind of the structure i am writing n here this is my h this is double bond now this is single bond character so this is having your single bond character amide is having the single bond character so due to this single bond character it is it will have the lowest wave number lowest wave number i can write lowest wave number for this one okay so what you can do you can put just uh, say if uh, i can write here answer i can write here please focus c is having the lowest value and you know this uh, this is having your more double bond character due to this resonance right this would be the highest one you are uh, in case of the ketone you know uh, this uh, ring is there right and this is simply your uh, aliphatic groups so they can show the inductive effect right so due to this inductive effect they will pull the electron density they will push the electron density on this particular bond so there would be electronic repulsion and due to this electronic repulsion it will have little lower double bond character but of course more than your uh, amide because you know resonance is far more uh, contributing factor or dominant factor when compared to the inductive effect okay so this will have the uh, a will have the second position so i can write here and your amide <coughs> uh, your so ester is having the highest value of the uh, your carbon double bond stretch okay so for this lactone is the wave number is highest and for this amide it is the lowest one and it is uh, for this ketone it is the intermediate one okay this is how you can understand understood the things <coughs> now moving to the next problem my next problem is this one uh again you see my for the see this is ester this is another ester and this is another ester okay and so this is four member ring right so actually uh, rainy season is going on monsoon actually has been arrived uh, that's why in rainy season i have allergy with the moisture so generally in the rainy season i frequently catches cold that's why stuffy nose and all these things rhinitis is there for me that's why it is little difficult for me to <coughs> speak properly or my voice is not like that which you have uh, been uh, observed in the previous lectures okay so kindly adjust okay so now you see uh, if i number it so you can see i say this is one this is two this is three this is four for member ring this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five five member this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six six member ring right and please remember uh, one very important thing when you are having the double bond nature so uh, basically what happens your double bond character is less stable your double bond character is less stable in the smaller ring due to the strain you know if you put the sp2 carbon in the ring it will always a strain one and strain actually decreases the stability okay so you should remember this particular point <coughs> your carbon double bond oxygen okay uh, this is not very comfortable in the uh, small sized ring okay it is not very comfortable so if you want to draw the structure for this one right this is your four membered lactone the lone pair present on the oxygen atoms so it will come here and it will go up and it will result here this species where this is positively charged that mean uh, double bond character in the uh, your four membered ring now similar thing you can do for other two species also i am doing for uh, this so what can happen 
the electron pair which has present on this oxygen of the six membered electron this can be donated here and this can come up and uh, you will have here another structure that structure would look like uh, this is single bond oxygen with negative this is double bond oxygen with positive okay so it is also having the double bond character and similarly this will also have this five membered electron will also have the double bond character but i told you uh, this double bond is not very comfortable in the small size ring so that means this is not a very comfortable situation for this small size ring so this will uh, not happen actually because it is not uh, feasible so it uh, did the molecule try to uh, try to uh, remain in this particular state as i already told you in my earlier previous large number of lectures molecules are very very clever they do only those things which are easier for them or in which they are comfortable so this uh, four membered electrode is comfortable in this situation because uh, double bond in the ring is not a very good situation for it so it will re uh, more or less remain in this particular situation so it is having the more double bond character a small ring will have your more double bond character so this will have your highest double bond character and you know uh, this six membered electron is, is this six member ring is quite high right so comparatively this is comfortable this double bond character is comfortable so in that case uh, double bond character is lowest remember i am talking the db nature of this particular bond okay so this is having the lowest db nature okay while this will have a this will have the highest db nature and this will have the intermediate db nature so if you arrange them then you will find wave number is highest for four membered lecture followed by your five membered and wave number would be lowest for your six membered lactone okay i hope you understood the things now moving to the next problem what it says right so i have changed the number again <coughs> number four which will show the larger wave number for oh stretch okay this is your pure ethanol ultra pure or the pure ethanol okay it simply means it will have the hydrogen bonding 2h5 oh uh, this is negative this is positive and it can form the hydrogen bond with the other alcohol molecule so basically this is your intermolecular hydrogen bonding this is your inter molecular h bond okay here you can see uh, this alcohol in this problem this alcohol has been dissolved in the carbon disulfide ch2 which is another solvent but that solvent is the non polar that solvent is the non polar first of all uh, you should remember this thing which is uh, very very important okay so your ethanol when dissolved in the ch2 or the carbon disulfide it will show the oxygen hydrogen stretch at the larger wave number why larger wave number because hydrogen bonding uh, lowers the value of the wave number it decreases the bond strength so i can write here intermolecular hydrogen bonding decreases the oh bond strength please remember intermolecular hydrogen bonding decreases the oh bond strength that mean this bond now will become weaker and weaker bond requires much lower energy compared to the stronger bond that mean for ethanol your wave number would be lower and for this ethan ethanol which is dissolved in the carbon disulfide your wave number would be high for this one high wave number so in short what you can say, what you can say ethanol when dissolved in the carbon disulfide will show the oxygen hydrogen stretch at a larger wave number right see there is extensive hydrogen bonding or a very good amount of the hydrogen bonding in the alcohol which is undiluted that means uh, pure alcohol right pure ethanol and your oxygen hydrogen bond is easier to stretch because hydrogen bonding actually will decrease the bond, uh, wave number wave number because is, it decreases the bond strength also so again you can understand this problem very important problem right especially for the beginners section
Now moving to the next problem. Distinguish between them using the IR spectroscopy. <coughs> that means you have been given uh, species. Okay, you have been given pair. First pair is ketone and aldehyde. Second pair is cyclic ketone and open chain ketone. Third is benzene or your cyclohexene, uh, cyclo and cyclohexene. And last is your uh, cis 2 hexene and the trans 2 hexene. So you have to uh, differentiate between them. So how we can uh, differentiate between them? Again, you see it's quite easy here. This is your ketone. Okay, I am writing CH3 here and again CH3 here. And then your aldehyde, again you see carbon double bond and I can write CH3 here. I am taking the example of the uh, acetaldehyde. You can take the example of the formaldehyde or uh, the other aldehyde also. Okay, now you see in that case, see for this carbonyl group, carbon double bond stretch would be there and for this carbon double bond oxygen, double car uh, ox stretch would be there. So, if you are... Uh, if you have memorized or if you have mugged all the values of your uh, uh, stretching values right for the different kinds of the bond then you can solve this problem only on the basis of the carbon double bond stretch right one would have the higher value of uh, uh, your carbon double bond stretch other one would have the lower value but believe me it is impossible for anyone right it is impossible for any person to memorize all the things actually all the stretching values so we will do the things little differently we will approach the uh, molecule with uh, uh, problem uh, differently however i am not saying that the approach which i am using in my lecture you will always use this approach if you are comfortable with the other approaches also so you can do those you can uh, do uh, uh, those approaches you can do solve your problems by using your uh, own approaches also okay so my uh, my thing is that this is having carbon single bond stretch, right? And this carbon single bond stretch, right? Aldehyde, it is the characteristic property of the aldehyde. Please remember, it will always show the stretching at 2020 and 2720 centimeter inverse. It is a kind of a doublet which you will always get for the aldehyde right you will always get this uh, thing for the aldehyde okay but this stretch actually right this stretch is uh, not present in case of the ketone you know this is your saturated one right this will have the other value this one however when i will explain the interpretation of the aldehyde and the ketone then i will also explain the other ways by which you can differentiate between them but to save your time you can focus on this carbon single bond stretch it is see it is not actually at uh, 2900 uh, right why 20, uh, not at 2900 because this is electron withdrawing also so this uh, bond is little bit be weaker one so the value of the carbon uh, hydrogen stretch would be lower that's why it is happening at 2820 or 2720 as a doublet but not at uh, 2900 but in that case it will occur somewhere around 2880 right so th in this way you can differentiate uh, between these two compounds or you can apply your approach also right now moving to the next problem my next problem is the cyclic ketone and the open chain ketone so again what I can do I can write my open chain ketone just like that and then my cyclic ketone. I'm taking the example of here cyclohexanone so, uh, so this one this is my uh, open chain ketone and this is my cyclic ketone again it's a very simple thing right this actually right if you if you check the bending vibrations if you check the bending vibration of these methyl right ch3 is here and another ch3 is here so this will give you the band at 1800 and 1385 and 1365 centimeter inverse okay due to this ch stretch Right, which is connected to this one but this is the cyclic compound right this will not you will not have this bending vibration for this one so this 1385 and 1365 the stretch between 1385 to 1365 would be enough to differentiate between these two okay but again i am saying if you have a different approach you can apply that approach also now the next is your benzene and then i am having my cyclohexane 
so see this problem is quite uh, simple you, so this benzene you know this carbon double bond oxygen is there so due to the presence of this carbon double bond oxygen you will get the stretch somewhere around at 1600 centimeter inverse okay because carbon double bond carbon is here but in case of the cyclohexane there is no uh, carbon double bond carbon so absence of you can write absence of band at somewhere around 1600 centimeter inverse it may be a 1620 it may be a 1680 right so basically it's it is having the range from 1680 to 1600 okay so that's why you can uh, that's how you can differentiate between these two aromatic is there aromaticity is there okay and uh, other way you can think uh, say hydrogen is also connected with this one so this ch stretch right which is uh, connected to this double bond this will happen at uh, 3000 3000 centimeter inverse but uh, these ch stretches they will occur at 2900 so you can have, you can apply this approach also now my next problem uh, which is your uh, cis 2 hexene and trans 2 hexene so cis and trans you can uh, you can write like that see this is your carbon double bond oxygen and then you see you can put hydrogen here you can put hydrogen here 2 this is CH2 this is CH3 this is CH2 this is CH3 and if you if you change the position see this is carbon double bond carbon you put the hydrogen diagonally and then you can write ET here ET here so this is your trans this structure is the trans structure okay so in this particular trans structure or cis structure you can differentiate in that manner in the uh, cis structure basically you are having the bending vibration please remember in the cis structure you are having the ch bending ch bending vibration uh, somewhere around 1732 675 centimeter inverse or you can call it vice versa right you can you can call it as uh, 675 to 730 or 730 to 675 it will not make any difference different textbook dif uh, uses different kind of the things okay while if you have uh, the trans right this is your trans structure for this actually that ch band which is actually that ch band will resonate little bit higher which is somewhere around uh, 960 to 980 centimeter inverse okay so this is a very important feature which you can apply on this uh, to differentiate between the cis and the transform however if you are not understanding the things why actually this happens more for uh, uh, trans is having the higher value of the ch stretch of bending uh, ch bending vibration not a stretch okay and why this uh, cis is having the bending vibration lower value so wait for my lecture uh, about the interpretation when i will uh, do the interpretation part i will explain these things there in the pretty much detail and if you are familiar with the interpretation of the ir spectroscopy then it is very easy for you to understand the things now moving to the next problem what it says right my next problem okay this cyclohexene and cyclohexane i have uh, uh, I have covered I think say no uh, let me go back oh okay I didn't cover this so this is your say cyclohexene so this problem is again very simple problem this is cyclohexene and this is your cyclohexane so again you can see it's quite easy it will have the uh, carbon double bond carbon stretch C double bond C stretch uh, which have the range actually from 1680 to 1600 as i told you earlier okay you know this there is no absolute value of these stretches it will de entirely depend upon the type of the molecule it is not like that if you are having the carbon double bond or carbon it will always resonate at 1630 or 1650 it may change that's why it is having the range from 1600 to 1680 because depending upon the value of the de depending upon the environment of this double bond that means the double bond which is present in the different kinds of the molecules may have the different value 
but clearly you can see this 1680 stretch 1680 to 1600 stretch will not be there in case of the cyclohexane because this carbon double bond carbon is not there and another feature which i already told you you know the hydrogen is connected here so this stretch would occur somewhere around at 300 cm inverse or higher than the 300 cm inverse more precisely 300 uh, not 300 3000 more precisely 3000 cm to 3100 cm inverse okay and uh, for this one you know the hydrogens are here for this you will have this value somewhere around at 2900 cm inverse this is how you can solve this one right now moving to the next problem uh, my next problem is problem f how will you differentiate between uh, one degree amine and the tertiary amine so again it's a quite easy one a uh, one degree amine you are having ch3 you are having ch2 and you are having an h2 right and for tertiary amine all hydrogens get substituted that mean you are having r you are having r you are having r so how you can differentiate so what i can do i can change this structure little bit and i can put hydrogen here i can put hydrogen here okay uh, so uh, uh, what you can do here uh, you can you can check the nh stretch this nitrogen hydrogen stretch okay so this nitrogen hydrogen stretch guys uh, this you know this happens actually uh, in the range of your alcohol that's why this amine and the alcohols are quite confusing however there is a way how to differentiate between the uh, nh stretch or the oh stretch right i'll discuss this in uh, the pretty much detail in my uh, interpretation part but today i'm not going to cover that thing okay so here you can see this will uh, occur somewhere around 3500 to 3300 cm inverse uh, this is also true for the uh, alcohol region okay right so this ch stage is there and you know this nitrogen is not having any hydrogen so this stage which is present in the primary amine at 3500 to 3300 cm inverse it will be absent in the tertiary amine so there is no nh stretch right there is no nh stretch what i can do right no data for the nh stretch i hope you understood the problem now moving to the next problem uh, my next problem is here uh, this this is your ester okay and this is your acid so uh, how will you differentiate between ester and acid so i am telling you uh, whenever you uh, want to differentiate between this one you know uh, this is my oh stretch alcohol stretch and i already told you alcohol will resonate somewhere uh, see the range is quite simple uh, from 3500 to 3300 cm inverse but generally you will have the value for th at 30 400 cm inverse for alcohol right this oh stretch is there but in case of the ester this oh stretch is not here and when the oh stretch is not here that means this band will be absent in this in this, in this case of the ester and another way you can apply this will have the partial single bond character so this will have the lower value this will have the lower value than this one right so however this is also true for this for this can also have, this will also have the uh, partial double bond character then you have to compare oh and uh, uh, och3 so don't go in that much of the detail you only differentiate uh, this molecule these two molecule between these two molecules by using the absence or the presence of the oh stretch this would be sufficient now moving to the next problem my problem is h next by is acid and then i am having my alcohol how will you differentiate between uh, acid and alcohol so this problem is again guys uh, rather a simple looking problem okay you see uh, this will have the stretch around 3400 cm inverse no problem this will also have the same value roughly same value not exactly but this will have 
this carbon double bond oxygen right this will have the value somewhere around 1700 centimeter inverse but this carbonyl stretch would not be there in that case so this problem was quite a uh, simple looking problem i should have not i should not have been put this problem here actually but if i put it if i put the problem here then okay it's fine you not only the difficult problems you also solve the uh, easier problems the easier things comes first so whenever you are trying to learn a particular topic try to solve the easier problem first and then go for the moderate problem and once you do the moderate problem then you can go for the difficult or the advanced problem now uh, this is my next problem now you have to differentiate between uh, cyclohexene and methyl cyclohexene so again it's a quite simple looking problem your methyl cyclo hexane it is having what ch stretch when it is having the ch ch stretch that mean it will have the value or uh, you will have the uh, not see ch stretch would not be very very helpful why uh, because uh, see the ch stretch is here in the ring there is ch stretch so in case of the cyclohexane also in the ch stretch is there so better to go with the bending vibration so ch bending vibration would be more helpful in that case and few moments back or few minutes back i already told you this bending would occur somewhere around at 1385 to 1365 cm inverse but this kind of the band which is the characteristic feature of the uh, methyl group but not for the methylene group it would be absent in that case because it is having only the methylene group not the methyl group so in this way you can differentiate in between these two right now moving to the next problem uh next problem is your benzene and your toluene so again you can uh, do the same thing here in that case right uh, or you can go differently here because you know this is entirely double bond here and here ch3 is there so ch stretch would be there in that case ch stretch can be helpful ch stretch and for ch stretch you will get the band at 2900 cm inverse however hydrogens are also present here but these hydrogens are connected with the double bond so it will not uh, give you the same value of the ch stretch which is gi given by the methyl so this problem again can be very easily solved by the presence or the absence of the methyl group however again you can apply your own concept your own methodology or own methodology also right <coughs> but it uh, that methodology or that concept must follow the principle okay now moving to the next problem my next problem is uh, this one uh, this is uh, butane 1 butane 2 h2 okay which of the following compound has a vibra uh, has a vibration that is infrared active so this is uh, quite a simple problem uh, you know this is ir inactive this would be ir inactive why ir inactive this is homonuclear okay this is your active this is your inactive okay uh, this is your active and this is uh, butane 2 let me draw the structure of the butane 2 carbon double bond carbon that this is hydrogen this is not butane 2 sorry i can remove hydrogen from here i can write uh ch3 i can write ch3 here so this is inactive right But why because there is no dipole moment in that case this is because it is perfectly symmetrical it is inactive while butane 1 if you draw the butane 1 okay this is active so this question is all about the ir active or ir inactive molecule if you understood the things easily then it is uh, quite easy for you if you uh, didn't understand what i have uh, written in the very quick manner you can go through the uh, my ir uh, spectroscopy lectures where i have explained which kind of the molecules would be ir active and which kind of the uh, 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 molecules would be ir inactive basically homonuclear diatomic molecules or the perfectly symmetrical molecules are ir inactive while 
unsymmetrical alkenes uh, unsymmetrical molecules which may have the dipole moment permanent dipole moment or sometimes the molecules which can generate uh, the uh, dipole moment by stretching or asymmetric stretch or kind of thing right they may be also your ir active as i have explained for the carbon dioxide molecule in my lectures if you are new here and watching video for the first time so it is better for you to go that particular ir lecture okay now moving to the next problem uh, list three factors that influence the intensity of an ir absorption band yes of course there are however these things i have explained in my lecture also but again uh, uh, since i have uh, put it this problem here so i'll explain this one okay so basically change in dipole moment during vibration first condition change in dipole moment during vibration this is the first condition which is required second how strong the intensity of the uh, band would be there this will depend upon the number of bonds that causes the absorption and lastly the concentration of the sample the concentration this concentration always play the important role in case of the nmr also if you want to do uh, the nmr spectroscopy however you can do the nmr spectros proton nmr spectroscopy with 1 mg of the sample right but sometimes uh, the molecule actually don't behave uh, not uh, molecule does, does not behave according to the instrument it, uh, that means sensitivity is low in that case you have to increase the concentration also so here also if you increase the concentration of the sample so the intensity goes up so guys uh, this is uh, this is the first installment of your 150 problems i can i i am dividing this uh, 150 problems in my separate lectures somewhere around of 50 minutes or the 60 minutes so this is the first installment okay and uh, i'll come up with the second and the third installments also but don't worry once i have completed all the installment i will merge all the video together and put a mega lecture for uh, this ir uh, problems also right so i hope you understood the problem right and uh, you will be able to understand or you will be able to solve more number of the problems after that okay and uh, you are if you are a regular viewer uh, for my uh, channel for my tetrad on chemistry classes please don't forget to like the video and if you are new here watching video for the first time please share with your friends and also subscribe my channel subscription is very very less for my channel i don't know why i generally put uh, enormous amount of the hard work to upload a particular kind of the lecture right but uh, my channel is not growing uh, that that much actually so because i have checked my uh, viewers uh, my 85% viewers are um non subscriber so please subscribe my channel it's free guys okay so that's it for today thank you thank you very much